Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have the co-founder of the Universal Humanities team with us, and it's Steve Farrell, and he is also, um, he is very involved, and he's also an author in Universal Dreams, which we're going to talk about in a second. But before we begin, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsors today, and it is dmaworld.com, and they are a consulting company that helps small businesses not get scammed by big marketing companies. They help you with different ways to market, and today, actually, they they have a special seminar, a workshop going on. And if you'd like to sign up, they have 30waystomarket.com. And if you go on there, you can sign up and listen to their, their seminar and participate in their workshops. So thank you, DMA World, for all the things you do to help small businesses become big, better businesses. And right now, I'd like to go to Steve. I'm very excited. Steve, why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do? Awesome. Thank you. And uh, thanks so much for having me, Stacey. So, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm Steve Farrell. As you mentioned, I'm, I'm a co-founder and the executive director now of a 501c3 nonprofit based in the United States, but global. Its name is Humanities Team. So you might expect it to be global. We, we're, uh, our support is for all of humanity, the 8 billion people on the planet. And uh, so, and as you mentioned, I did just uh, publish a book. It just came out here uh, a little over a month ago. It's called A New Universal Dream. And this book, A New Universal Dream, tells my story of a guy, young man, 12 years old, uh, living with a divorced mom, six sibling, and a little 1,300 square foot home. Uh, and, and then uh, finding myself after college as I moved out, moved to the West Coast in the center of wealth creation in Silicon Valley. I really was kind of in the right place at the right time there in Silicon Valley, because in 1990, January 1, I started my first company. And over 10 years, we grew it to uh, 75 million. Then inside wow. of that first company, I launched a second company uh, that uh, we grew to 75 million in two years. And then while that was going on, <laughs> Uh, I went through my own personal awakening experience of, you know, wow, this whole, this, uh, every, the, the inner, the, the universe being deeply interconnected. In fact, you know, uh, a single presence, you could call it like a universal consciousness or intelligence that's animating all of life. Most of us have heard a term like this. So, but awakening to that, uh, personally awakening to that. And, and that awakening then caused me to lose my appetite for, for business, my passion just dropped steadily. And uh, there at the end of the 1990s, I, I sold these companies. I left this uh, the, uh, the business association that I was in where I was with, when I say center of wealth creation, I mean, truly uh, I, I was in that, like Gavin Newsom was in my chapter. There were 60 of us, uh, the guy that ran the largest real estate equity investment trust in the whole world, Hamid Bogadam, uh, who was a friend was in it. Extraordinary people uh, actually love these people because they were so creative and, and had great vision and were growing these organizations. But I myself uh, fell out of this whole uh, interest in, in starting and growing companies. And in fact, through this personal awakening that I had, what I could see is that I was just playing a kid's game. You know, in today's world with what's going on, where yeah. my whole interest is, you know, fiduciary responsibility, I've got to raise that top line. I got to raise that bottom line. I'm going to enrich shareholders where I just keep doing this. Uh, sure, you make a lot of money. But but here's the thing is uh, it's not what people think. So because I was there and I, I had that front row seat to, to what was happening. And most of these families, uh, there were there were some that looked pretty darn healthy, but but many of them, even I'll say most we're very challenged because of the stress and pressures of that world where you're minting money and just wanting to create more and more and more of it. And I realized that the American dream was not, you know, what people, people think it is as you climb to those upper tiers of power and fame and fortune and stuff. Uh, so I was called away. I uh, then launched this 501c3 humanities team with Neil Donald Walsh, the author of the Conversations with God series. We launched it 20 years ago. And wow. thrown into a huge educational nonprofit. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. 
I want to hear more about the universal um, dreams. Like you were talking to me right before the show, there was different, there was this different umbrella segments to it. And I'd love for the audience to understand, maybe if you can go into debt and explain to people about universal dreams and how it affects us as people and understanding and connecting with ourselves and how it all plays in our life. Yes, I'd love to talk about it. So, and it's it it's a dream. Honestly, I believe will we are already or soon will live into because science again is affirming that we're like a body within a body. So, of course, my body is named Steve Farrell, and I'm I'm within this whole universe and cosmos. So, I'm a body yes. within that larger body. We don't actually well the the way we were taught science and and education growing up was you know i'm the son of you know my mom and dad and i've got this one life and you know just the physical science newtonian science which is really it's all true but in in many ways it's the least consequential science because yeah. the new science is saying no yeah of course you have a physical body but there's a spiritual being that's inhabiting that body and that's you have the if you're a body inside of a body well you've got all the properties of that larger body, which means everlasting life, unlimited potential. These things could sound kind of new agey or something, but I promise you they're not. I uh, I work with mediums and near-death experience people. Uh, Dr. Eben Alexander just did a program with us who wrote Proof of Heaven. Uh, so I can tell you, honestly, uh, there is no such thing as death of ourself, the physical body, of course, but, but there is no such thing as death of ourself. We actually go on and live a life and actually many, many lives. And, and if that sounds uh, odd to you, again, I'll come back to it because there's some education that can even be free that's huge that we just created. Uh, I'll come back to that later. I want to stay with the new universal dream. So the new universal dream is living into this uh, awakening that, again, I think many people that are listeners here have had where we're, we're awakening to where their uh, we're a part of this universe around us. There's a oneness, so to speak, a diversity and unity. And as we create a daily practice to live into that and educate ourselves and start in, in, in these things, um, we start living a truly extraordinary life. The interesting thing here, Stacy, is as I was sharing in Silicon Valley, I didn't so much find that uh, that delicious life that I thought I might find. Here, I found it. And Anybody in any home, in any region of the world can live that delicious life simply by living into this universal dream where we understand we're a part of this larger whole around us and we follow our soul's calling. That's part of our daily practice where we're going within our inner sanctuary and we're visioning uh, things. There's actually, we could we could talk some more about daily practice because there's, there's some powerful stuff we can do that's part of this delicious living. But so the new universal dream is understanding what uh, where we are in this universe, understanding are the real properties of of who we are, which include everlasting life, and then uh, living into it. I'll call it as our bigger self, a part of that world around us, and not just our little self, that where it's a me, 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 me. I want this, I want that. It's bigger. Yeah. Self, I'm supporting things in my home, in the community, and in the world. That's amazing. You know, I I have re read books about people who've had near life in experiences and they share those experiences in their books. And a lot of people, they all say the same thing. They talk about how it was such a beautiful experience that they didn't want to come back. And it was a freeing experience. And, you know, maybe you could touch a little base on that and explain from your perspective what you know about people who go through life and have near-death experiences, what they're what they're actually claiming to experience, what's happening, if you know, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, happy to. So again, for 20 years, I've been leading this nonprofit. I've worked with incredible partners and colleagues. So we're kind of all doing this together. But we work then with with faculty that create these master classes. We we have a streaming, uh, conscious streaming platform, and we work with faculty to create these master classes. People like James von Prague, who many have heard of, an incredible, yeah. medium. Uh, Suzanne Geisman, another incredible medium, Karen Nowy, another one, near death experience like Dr. Evan Alexander. Now, they are all sharing almost exactly the same thing, and. You even what you're bringing in this as you're bringing in some tidbits here, Stacy. That's this. It's exactly that. That uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, you know, people 
uh, of course we miss our family members, our dad passes, our mother passes, a brother, a sister, you know, good friend. Of course we miss them. It's hard. But here's the thing is, man, they are going to such an un unbelievable place. The the afterlife is, is a container of pure love and light. So we're yeah. like a candle in the sun there. I mean, it's unbelievable. And there's a freedom as we leave our body. And they all talk about this. And as you mentioned, people that have had near-death experiences, they don't even want to come back. They're yeah. like, really happy here where I am. Right? Yeah. Also, I'll just bring in something because we might want to come back to this is when we transition, one of the things they all talk about and, and they say the same thing is there's there's a life review. People maybe have heard this. The life review is interesting because in the life review, it's not like a recording. It's real time. It's almost like you're back living your life again. But what it is, is it's people that were with you at these significant moments in your life and what they were feeling and thinking and seeing as they were with you. It's not what you were thinking or saying or doing at all. It's just what people were thinking, feeling, and seeing with you during the course of your lifetime. And then at the end of that, you're asked at, in your next life, is there anything you might want to do different? So we can take a page from that because there's uh, this is telling us something. This yeah. is in this life, it's telling us, you know, hey, how I'm going to use the word loving. How loving are we being? You know, <laughs> which means truthful, uh, right. which means in service, these kinds of things, right? That's all that we're looking at, not the car or the home or the vacations or the clothes or anything like that. It, yeah. this, looking at now when i talk to people and i also talk to um um you know people who ha have experienced grief because someone they love had passed i get a common question you know what's going to happen when i pass am i ever going to be able to see that person will i be able to touch that person because they know that the physical being is no longer there but that spiritual energy is still alive and well and they're like, am I going to be able to connect with that energy? Will I be able to even touch, you know, or, or experience something with the person I might have spent my whole entire life with as a spouse or partner? Do you have any answers for that? Or do you know any any uh, information you could supply? I do. Yeah. So again, I, I work with these. I, I create master classes around these topics. Uh, and And again, just the short answer is, let me tell you, if you could know what they were experiencing, you'd be maybe more concerned about yourself here on earth in this body than them in the afterlife. Because in the afterlife, it's stunning, truly. It's it's a stunning experience there. So, but um, don't take it from me. So we're, again, a 501c3 nonprofit. Our, our organization name is Humanities Team with a Y, humanitiesteam.org. And if you go to our website at the top left, it has programs. And if you mm -hmm. pull down the programs, it's got free programs. So uh, look for the free programs with uh, James Von Prague, Suzanne mm -hmm. Eisman, Karen Noe, Dr. Evan Alexander. These would be four. They're free. They're about an hour long. I go through them. They're, the the wisdom that they share that's free is extraordinary. And that gets to uh, how you can actually even be uh, become a bridge yourself to the afterlife. I've been taught, I use Suzanne Giesman's, it's called a bless me method. And yeah. this method, I've been in touch with my sister who passed in the early 80s, my dad, my grandmother. Uh, two days ago, my my wife's mother dropped in. Uh, so, and angels and guides all the time. It's it's not that hard to do. It's like learning, the, the metaphor they use is it's like learning to play the piano. So right. most of us don't have that skill. It takes a little while to kind of sit there and play with the keys. But uh, it, it's not that hard to learn. And it's, it's, it's extraordinary because you can get a lot of, wisdom and guidance and support and stuff uh where you learn to become a bridge yourself to the afterlife i think one of the most important things um is getting rid of that skepticism and open yourself to the universe i think you know from what i understand from from what i know you know you you could maybe correct me or inform me deeper but it seems like when you open yourself to the universe and you connect with the universe the universe the spirits the guides the angels people who passed are more apt to connect with you or even to come to you to maybe send a message to somebody else that they know they can't get to and and share that message with is that true yes it is true yeah yeah absolutely that you can be it can be for you it can be for a friend a family member you can become a bridge yourself to the afterlife and to others here in this life 
Let me share, share a quick story because uh, this might help ground this whole discussion a little more. Yeah. People know Wayne Dyer. He, mm -hmm. he passed in uh, 2015. Right. Uh, now, uh, years after he passed, uh, one of the other, he was part of Hay House uh, and he published books through Hay House. One of the other Hay House authors, Karen Noe, who's a great medium, was walking around her house and and mediums, you know, have these people knock on their door. Well, she's walking around. It was six in the morning and it was Wayne, Wayne Dyer showing up and saying, call my daughter. And then, you know, and, and then from that other phone call, son and so on, uh, which might sound like it's kind of impossible. But listen to this story. So uh, one of his daughters is named Serena. So uh, she actually created a master class with us about what the story that I'm telling you. And uh he reached out, Wayne reached out through Karen to Serena and was talking to Serena and and uh, Serena had a six month old uh, at the time. And Wayne said, congratulations on the new baby that's coming. And Serena's uh, jaw dropped of, oh, this is crap. You know, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I, I have a six month old. Dad, you know, I already had that baby. I'm not having another baby. And Wayne says, no, you know, you're, you're, you're pregnant. You're going to have a baby on July 4th. And she's like, oh, you know, and then the whole family turns to her because she'd had a glass of wine the pre previous night. And they say, well, you know, Serena. So Serena says, okay, I'll show you guys. And she goes and gets herself tested. When is she due? July 4th. Wow. Then, if that isn't enough, this happens. So when you're pregnant and you're delivering, you don't go to social media to say I'm heading to the hospital to deliver. That's a private, quiet. Yeah. She's in the hospital with her sister, Sage. Uh, in delivery. Mm -hmm. Sage's cell phone rings. Uh, who is it? It's Karen Noe. And they go, Karen Noe? Yeah, put her through. Yeah, I mean, in delivery, she's delivering her baby. Karen says, Wayne just wanted to be here while the baby is delivering. Okay, <laughs> this is the story that Serena and Sage share. Uh, and, and there's much more, actually. But if so, if people think that this can't happen, you know, just Go, go watch this story. You'll see it, the free program on the Humanities Team website, Sage and Serena Dyer and Karen Noe. Uh, wow. And there's so much more, you know, that's happening in today's world where we lift the veil, so to speak, you know, and wow. because the physical realm and non-physical realm are actually one, we just uh, have to learn to lift that yes. veil. So. Oh, I agree with you 100%. Now, I, I know for myself, I've had a few, I would say under 10, but I've had a few moments where in my dreams, I felt like I lifted out of my, my body and I could look down at my body. And then I felt like I was flying and it was such a freeing um, experience and that I didn't want to, I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to stop. And it felt like I was going light years away, but then at some point I came back and then I came into my body again, but I didn't want to come back, but I came into my body and then I would wake up but it, it, it just seemed too powerful. And it just seemed too, uh, it, it seemed, it didn't seem like a dream. I, it didn't feel like a dream. And, and yeah, that's paranormal. I mean, you're, we, we have these, uh, these, these, uh, uh, these senses, you know, there's many of them, uh, many of these senses, Claire video, Claire, Claire audience, Claire, um, uh, I forget all of the Claire words, but that's, that's mm -hmm. one of them where we, actually leave the body and experience it ourselves. Many people have had that same experience. So uh, yeah, the afterlife, don't worry about the afterlife. It's going to take care of itself real well. While we're here now, this is where we can have good conversation because most of us can get way off track. I mean, I was on the American dream track, you know, private jets, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Get off track, you know, where we just become disconnected from the world around us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Now it, it like when when we're on, I always feel like we're we're on Earth for a purpose. We're being taught, and I feel like you know I always get the the notion that you know something tells me that it's kind of like a boot camp, and they're preparing us for something. And I don't know if that's true or not, but you know, is there a purpose? Why we are here? You know, it, 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 you know, and why we're brought back to Earth? And then you know, you do have some Reikis, you know, you know, who who talk about you know how we go light years away, and then you know, some of us some of us may volunteer to come back. But is there a purpose for being on Earth? Is is there a a reason, or is everybody go through Earth, or do you have any any explanations or any? Uh, uh, teachings 
So let's dive into that conversation. So my book, this a new universal dream. Uh, so it, it there are three premise in there, and you could also call it three promises in there. I mean, this is how much I believe it's true. I'll call them promises. So the first one, there's a universal consciousness animating all of life. I've said that before. The second one, then these are linked. The second one is that we're actually designed as part of that larger body. And I've said that too, we're a body inside of a body. Now, the right. third one is, is to the extent this is true, then the more we give ourselves away, or you could use the term, the more we're in service to the world around us, living as I'll call it our bigger self, the happier we are, uh, the better we feel. So yeah. this is, this is these are what I'm going to call the three promises. It's the, my my book kind of, uh, goes into this in the end at the beginning is this long haired kid hitchhiking around the U S you know, uh, smoking dope and stuff, you know, <laughs> what is life going to be? And my guidance counselor is saying, Steve, you are so average. You, you know, you're just very average. And that's where, where, where I start, which is kind of where many of us start, you know, that you're not going to really be anybody. Uh, and then just growing into who I've become as I've, as I left the Silicon Valley world and came into this other nonprofit world. Um, so now, so what this is getting to here, Stacy, is is higher purpose and um, conversations with God. You know, the co-founder of Humanities Team was Neil Donald Walsh. So he's a close partner, of course. What it says uh, in book one, I don't know if you've read that, but there's a little story called The Little Soul in the Sun, okay, in, in, in the book. And the little soul in the sun story is the little soul goes to the big soul uh, and, and you'll understand who the little soul is and the big soul here in just one second and says, hey, I want to be the light. And the big soul says, well, you already are the light, uh, you know, and the little soul says, well, yeah, but there's nothing but light. You know, it's like I'm a candle in the sun. You know, there's, there's nothing here but light. Yeah, yeah. And the big soul says, well, you know, if you want to be the light in the absence of the light in the darkness, then that you're going to have to be born into a body. And the right. little soul says, good. And so the little soul is born into this world. There's lots of darkness here. You know, it's, yeah. it's not just light. So, and the little soul then learns to kind of keep that light burning. Um, right. As it, which is being loving, which is hearing well, which is telling the truth, which is being service, all of these things. And so the little soul has its life and goes back and says, wow, that was what an incredible experience. Now that little parable is uh, what was shared as the parable for, you know, your question, why are we here? What are, what is our purpose? Uh, I believe this is actually a true story myself. Yeah. I, I, I kind of feel like, um, you know, like, uh, you know, our past lives also play a present in our, our future lives. Like, um, you know, our, cause you know, we only use 10% of our brains as human beings and we have 90% that's not being utilized. And if we came from past lives, you know, what it, from either good experiences or bad experiences, they have to, I wonder, do they, they, they have to have some type of, of effect, whether, whether, you know, What's your take on that? Because it's, you know, it's really going deep, you know, the conversation. But what is the, you know, your 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 point of view when you have had more than one experience and you come back and maybe the prior experiences weren't good or they might have been good because some people see out of the box. Some people are just, you know, like you said, service people. They're really doing good for society. They see things on a on a on a perfectly you know, like a, a very high level, you know, more higher than others. Then you have those that are skeptical in the box. It's either black or white, you know. So does that happen because maybe they were limited or things happened prior in other lives? And, you know, what's your take? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you. So uh, just as you share, you know, the soul, I'm going to call it, because that's the everlasting part that's coming back around again and again and embodying is, the, the soul wants to experience it all, is what it said. Uh, this, again, comes from the Conversations with God, the ninth book. It says that um, if soul wants to experience it all. So, you know, the color white is actually all colors combined, right? It's black, green, red, blue. When you, we, remember, we learned that in science class. So you put yeah, them yeah, yeah. in the bucket, it's like, what? Why? Are you kidding me? Yeah, it actually is once. <laughs> soul is wanting to experience it all. And that's why we're coming back. If I need to want to experience this and that. Now, but to make this relevant here now for listeners, so the the issue is, is in this life now, what is it that we're wanting to experience? And that means getting in touch with our own soul's calling. So, and that means not listening to the worldly noise that the people that love us, your 
brothers and sisters and parents and coworkers, and even sometimes your your wife or kids. Uh, they're well-meaning because they love you, but they're telling you do this and you'll be a good doctor or a good lawyer or something. Right. Uh, your soul, on the other hand, is going to guide you to that thing in this life of this is what I want to experience. Now, what it tends to be, especially in today's world where you've got so much challenge for individuals and in the collective, the drumbeat of extreme weather, et cetera, what yeah. it tends to be is, is uh, the soul is calling us to really live into, I'm going to call it this larger self, you know, not the me, 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 Steve, but the larger self of, hey, you know, you can be with Stacy on her incredible program. You can, with Humanities Team, create this new master class. You can, you know, create your own book that tells your story and provide tools, you know, just where I'm going to offer assistance to people. Now, that's that's my soul's calling. I think that's kind of the general range of many people's souls calling, but the way to find it is to go into our own daily practice, our own inner sanctuary, so to speak, where yeah. we hear very clearly if we if we have a daily practice, what that uh, calling is and how we can serve it. Now, do you have any suggestions for people who want to find out what their true calling is? Because I have I have come across so many people in life and so many clients also. What is my purpose? You know, why am I here? You know, what am I meant to do? And some people can spend their entire life trying to figure out that what is my purpose in life? And they feel kind of lost because they might be doing the stuff that they're supposed to be doing, that environment, what people tell them to do. But deep down inside, something's missing. They don't feel like they, their purpose has been met. Now, what are ty some types of exercises like you just mentioned and that people might be able to get in tune with themselves and really dig deep inside themselves and, and be able to connect and figure out what that message is? Yeah, so, um, so a few things here. First is have a lot of self-compassion. And I don't think a lot of us have as much self-compassion as we, as we deserve to have is there are many people right now, as you mentioned, really challenged. What is my purpose? And further than that, you know, feeling anxiety in many cases, disempowered, all of these kinds of things, fatigued, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so start with self-compassion of just find some quiet time, uh, in prayer, in meditation, walking in nature in stillness, just going out on your porch, front or back porch, uh, yeah. where just love, really love yourself, love, uh, you know, bring as much love in to yourself as you can, because we all deserve that love. Uh, and the universe actually is, is trying to pour that love on. But we a lot of times have our hands over our head and don't allow it in because we're just we're, we're challenged, you know, we're struggling, we're not clear what our purpose is. So that's where I'd start. Then second is, um, is just open your heart to, you know, the universe, God, the divine, you know, what term you want to use. I like using the yeah. term divine, but, and just say, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd like some clarity. You know, what is the thing I was called to in this life and that I'm being called to now, you know, what is this? Right. Higher purpose? Uh, and then help me one to understand it. And then two, to live into it, really give me that support. Once I've got the vision, give me the provision. What I found in life is you, wherever you're given your uh, vision, you're always given provision. So yes. like just given the vision, start humanities team with Neil Donald Walsh 20 years ago was nothing, no money, no organization. Wow. Now we're the largest uh, nonprofit and tra transformational education in the whole world. Uh, right. We were supported. So, and everybody is another thing here. Uh, the divine does not play favorites. Okay. There's no favorites that are ever played, even Buddha or Christ, that it is all what I've been told. It's purely a function of, how big of self are we living into? Uh, there's there's consciousness, there's super consciousness and supra consciousness. The higher we go, the bigger self we live live into. The more you know, it's that vision and provision. The more provision we're given, the more miracles that are showing up, synchronicities, all of these things that will happen. So yeah. so, so that's that's what I'd recommend. You you will be guided if you just are earnest and and spend some quality time here. Now, you just talked about three different levels. Now, for a spiritual person who really wants to seek, you know, the highest form of spiritual spirituality, they want, they they like being connected, they feel the purpose, they feel the benefits from it. And how do you get to that next level and that higher level that you just mentioned? Simply by deciding that's what you want. That's all. It's just you decide that's what you want. So this is my daily practice. I'm here I am in this very unique position running 
uh, with, with, again, incredibly talented colleagues and partners all over the world, humanities team, this nonprofit, where yeah. conscious education and science and spirituality and body practices, philosophy, all these things. Yeah. And, uh, so my own uh, daily practices, I'm just going right into, it's metaphysical. You know, remember what was said 2000 years ago, it's done unto you as you believe. So my yes. daily practices, I'm there, I, even before I sit down, I'm going into that creation space of just seeing an awakened world. We're all awake. We feel this oneness, this diversity and unity, where we feel this conscious living with all of what that means, where relationships are different. Everything is different. So I'm I'm going there and seeing and feeling that, and, and I believe creating that, and then feeling my connection from today's world to that world. And then just like here now, you know, I'm going to spend my day just doing the embodying and expressing the things that are supporting that uh, reality that I believe is unfolding in, in today's world. So, which is at that supra conscious level, the supra conscious level is a level of big self where you're saying, yes, I want, of course, you know, for my family, a nice home and, and things, but uh, my, what I'm going to serve here, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis is this world around me that is very challenged right now. There are all these needs and I'm yeah. going to uh, do the things I can. We, we can't do everything, but we can all do something. Right. And what, what is your intake on reincarnation? Because basically a lot of these things you're talking about, you know, your your spirit arising and, and you know, also coming back. Um, do You know, they say a lot of times, you know, with reincarnation that the people you knew from previous lives, you know, sometimes will stay in your environment. Like you'll come across somebody, you'll meet somebody one day, you'll start talking about that person. And you might become friends with that person and you feel like you've known them for, for decades. And is it, is it true that, you know, we kind of, our energies kind of stay within a certain realm and environment when we do come back, if we do come back, we kind of stay with the people that we might've known in previous lives. So, yeah, now this is bridging over in, in conscious living. There's so many dimensions to it. One is called Akashic Records, which is what you're talking about here now, Stacy. And Akashic Records is saying, yes, exactly. That that's actually where the records are stored of all these lives. Uh, that you've lived uh, to up until now, and and what it's what these uh, leaders share that specialize here is that we actually, as part of this, you know, said shared that parable of little soul in the sun. So in that little soul state where we're deciding we want to be born back into the world, part of that process is that we create soul contracts, is what Akashic Records calls it, where from prior lives, as you mentioned, there are these people, very special, sometimes family members, sometimes best friends. Sometimes somebody you just meet, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe we just met. How do we, you know, there's there's so much yeah. here, you know? So these are the soul contracts where we actually, as part of that decision when we were gonna be born into the world said, I'd really like for these 30, 40, 50, 60 people to have some role in my life. And uh, right. which is really pretty cool and special. That is really cool, you know, because it, it's, uh, you know, it, you know, a lot of times like um, you, you meet people and, and, you know, and you feel like you've known them for, for, for decades and decades and decades, and you can feel the connection. You can feel that spiritual connection with that person. And, um, you know, I also feel, you know, um, what is your intake about when, you know, sometimes you meet people and you'll get the good energy vibe off of them. You'll get the negative energy vibe off of them. When people come back on the earth and they may have negative energy and it could probably be from the environment they grew up, trauma that occurred, you know, um, you know, from for, for a person who's spiritual, you know, how are we picking up on those en negative energies? Is it, is it just, is it, is, is it the universe that's making us aware or is it just everything that, that we've been through and, and our spiritual our spiritual um, connection where we have gotten ourselves to such a high point that we could just feed off other people's energy and, and, and kind of grasp, you know, what's good, what's bad, who's, who, who should we should stay away from? Who should we not stay away from? Because they do say that negative energy can suck you right in because it drains a person when you're around negativity. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, so just some basics, which we've covered here, but uh, so it's a spiritual universe means that we're bodies inside of bodies. Bodies are our energy. It's their energy and they're vibrational. So we've all experienced growing up those low energies, you know, I'm tired, I'm exasperated. I'm not sure. I don't have a cloudy vision of the future, all of these things. 
uh, we grew up with the old science, the Newtonian science. It didn't get into any of this energy work and setting your vibration. None of us knew anything about this, right? So growing up, uh, I, I could have been what you're talking about, that bad energy, because I'm I'm just all over the place. It's a roller coaster, right? Yeah. <laughs> about energy or setting your own energy or a daily practice or anything. So uh, and they're much of the world is like that today. They have they have not been educated on these things and the latest science that's affirming these mystical traditions and things. Uh, so and they can be just as you share, you know, really challenging people to be around because they're really not doing these things. So now here, you know, for me and with the supranatural thing uh, and, and what I understand the invitation in life to be is and also what Martin Luther King said. Right. He said. Darkness can't heal darkness, only right. light, right? So, I mean, yeah. you put it down to as simple as that. So our invitation is just be our highest and best self. Listen well, hear them. Uh, you know, just being heard is a lot of times helpful to people. I had somebody, uh, one of my neighbors, as I was walking my dog and she peed on their lawn and the person just really let me have it and said, don't ever, you know, just shouted at me. And I was with my son who wanted, wanted to shout back. And I said, Dylan, you know, Look at what the trauma, you know, there's, we don't know what's triggering this person. This, I mean, there's some, look at how good we feel. We're out having fun with our dog and clearly he's not doing, well. you know, we don't need to be yelling back here. That's exactly that's compassionate here, you know, right? So uh, that's, I think, is the invitation is to just stay in this whole, you know, little soul thing of we're here actually, because we wanted, we chose to be here at this time during this great shift of the ages, it's happening now, this pivot, right, into this whole new way of living on the earth. We're in the middle of that right now. And uh, that's where I think we're going to really feel, when we hit the pillow at night, where we are, do our very best to be that light, you know, loving, listening, et cetera, person, that's how we sleep really well at night, I think. Oh, I agree. I agree. hundred percent. Now, I, I happen to like the chakra bowls, the singing bowls, some people call it. And I find when you absorb different sounds and vibrations and you really meditate, I find that it's very not only relaxing, but it it, it helps to align me and, and focus, communicate better, um, even be more compassionate when things are going tough. Uh, how do you feel about the 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 chakra bowls or the singing bowls and sound therapy and how it can play you know an impact on on a person's spiritual well being and also physical well being? Yeah, I love it. I, I love it. And uh, one of my friends here in Boulder, Colorado, is Jonathan Goldman, who started the Sound Healers Association, and so I get to hang out with him and his wife and. Uh, so as you mentioned, you know, these little bowls where you cling them or you go to YouTube and you play these frequencies or spiritual music, or even Jonathan wrote a book on humming. Cause you know, when mm -hmm. you, when, cause when you're humming, uh, you, you can't, that, that takes you, it's an elevator right up, right? You can't hum and be angry. You know? uh, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, no, it's, it's an immersive thing. So we're taking ourselves into a higher vibration state. It creates that elevator right up and uh, so it's one of the tools in our toolkit when we're living consciously and we're all going to have challenging days where just things really aren't working uh and this right. is why we go to like uh, these sound frequencies or these various healing sound healing modalities that uh just make you feel so much better right now tell me a little about the workshops you have because it, i find them very interesting and they seem like they can be very beneficial for people in many ways yeah, thank you. So, well, one is, um, boy, just around the corner here, the Global Oneness Summit. So, and it's a free summit. And if you go to uh, uh, humanitiesteam.org with a Y, you'll see it there and you can sign up or you can you can Google Global Oneness Summit and then you'd leave your name and email address and then you get the free links. Uh, yeah. First of all, you get the live link. So you can, you can actually go through the whole program, October 21 to 24 uh, for four days. And, and then you're going to miss some of those. So we send links out those same days and you can hear the programs again. They're free all for uh, for 24 hours. So that's one thing that's a free workshop. Um, another, let me mention, I um, with Neil Donald Walsh, we created a, a new masterclass called The Art and Science of Conscious Living. So uh, and masterclasses are a huge investment. We spent nine months making this thing, researching it, all the things we're talking about, so much more. I'm talking about this now because it's we did something that we've never done before. 
which is we let people name their own price on this one. Because right. where, where you just say, I don't have any money, zero. And you're going to get all 16 modules and the mentoring and all of this. And because we put all of this wisdom of what these things that we're covering of conscious living in it and with what's right. going on in today's world, uh, and our our particular mission is make conscious living pervasive worldwide in 17 years by 2040. So we said, yeah. okay, let's create, let's put our money where our mouth is and create a program and let people name their own price. So go check that out. Go to if you go to humanitiesteam.org and under the free programs, the free program is accelerating your conscious evolution. Yeah. And uh, that leads into this one, the art and science of conscious living, which you'll find under the master classes. And if you go, you can read the whole thing when you go down to the bottom. It lets yeah. you just name your own price. Oh, that sounds amazing. So when um, you also have a book that you just recently launched, can you tell me a little about that book and where people actually can find it? Yes. So it's it's called uh, the A New Universal Dream. And if you go to a new universal dream .com, you'll see lots more in the book, including uh, there was a really uh, Kirkus, which is one of the biggest, uh, most reputable uh, yeah. reading organizations gave it a really outstanding uh, review and it is um, so, so you can read about it read the review the first four chapters we open up for free and then the really neat thing is you can buy the book at Amazon and bookstores but if you keep the receipt and just enter the receipt number on that site uh, newuniversaldream.com we'll give you my $300 it's actually $299 master class for free called conscious leadership which is oh. an master class so and Amazon's selling the book right now for between twelve and fourteen dollars, so uh, it's a pretty pretty good deal. Uh, so be sure to keep your receipt uh, if you run out and buy it. And the book tells this story, you know, of a twelve year old kid, long hair, smoking pot to today, uh, with with you know where I was there, like I say, on in the private jet world, and then why I left it. And throughout the book, you'll see what I did with this is I stop and say, wow, I learned this big lesson here, you know, and uh, and and here's a lesson for you too. I stop and do that throughout the book because it's real objective is to support people on the conscious journey. You're, uh, Stacy, bringing up many of these things that people wrestle with, we all do, you know, these challenges. I wrestle yeah. with, you wouldn't, have, can't even imagine uh, just with this life I've lived. And I stop on all of them and, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty honest, you'll see, I'm pretty honest about myself. My sister said, Steve, you, you know, you were nice to everybody in your book, but yourself, you know, uh, right. I don't know. You know, I did, I did tell the truth on myself when there were some stories that weren't very, uh, you know, very positive, but they were true. So, and I learned a lot. So uh, those, those things are in there. Um, it, uh, I think it's a great little tool shed for people on the conscious journey, you know, that can get your legs strong as you're going through tough circumstances. Right. Oh, that's amazing. That's truly really amazing. Now you have two websites. Can you tell everybody the name of the just two websites so they can contact and go on those websites? Yeah, you bet. So the, the book is a new universal dream.com. And then uh, humanities team is humanities team with a y.org. Uh, and then also global oneness summit. Uh, you can you can Google or Bing that and it'll take you right there to that big summit that's just around the corner coming up and it's free. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Now, is there anything that you'd like before we go? Any tips or any anything you'd like to tell the audience before we before we uh, go? Yeah, let me just say this, just uh, speaking to your audience that there's such a beautiful opportunity here and I'm really not selling anything or marketing anything. Um, I'm really just coming from uh, having this opportunity for 20 years to work with all the scientists and the mediums and the near-death experiencers and so on. I there's there's so much I know from this, and what I know is that we absolutely are, you know, a son or daughter of the Most High uh, of of the right. divine universe, and and uh, where we live into that. And we, where we understand that and really live into it, embody and express that in our lives uh, and engage <laughs> others, uh, we're going to have the most beautiful, delicious life. Uh, and where, where we're not experiencing uh, the delicious life, it's probably because we're living more in the transactional realm or even the relational realm, not the divine yeah. presence realm. And uh, in the, when we get out into that divine presence realm in our bigger self, that's where it all happens. All the miracles, the synchronicities, the fun. 
So I just invite people to uh, sit with that and just see if that might ring true for you. Oh, that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. Uh, you know what? This has been out of this world. I've had a, a, a remarkable experience talking to you and you've shed some light on so many different things. I'd love to have you back on the show and we can maybe go a little deeper and maybe talk about some other topics as well. But thank you so much, Steve, for coming on this show. This has been a, a remarkable experience. Yeah, sounds good, Stacey. We look forward to coming back. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. Okay, you too. Take care. Bye-bye.